Okay, everyone, welcome back to the show. Uh, great to see you. Just great to see you. I mean, it's great to see you now. We're at over 100 subscribers. That was a big win. You got to celebrate the small stuff, and I'm happy that uh, 100 plus of you have chosen to support us. It's great. I appreciate it. He appreciates it. I don't know if he, uh, he actually, that's nice. He yawned right as I said, we appreciate that. He does. He just doesn't know that he appreciates it yet. So the topic of today's video is going to be on signing agency documents, buyer broker agreements. And I know for basically anyone that's not in the real estate world, you're going, the heck does that mean? Don't worry. That's why I'm here. Everyone relax. Everyone relax. I'm going to break it down for you. Okay. Because I got notes. I got notes and we're going to break it down. Okay. So <clears throat> here's the deal. Um, you have agents and then you have an agent's brokerage to tell you the difference is, is pretty simple. So I'm an agent, for example, okay? I have a brokerage that oversees me to make sure that I stay compliant within all the real estate laws, I stay within the code of ethics, um, that I do all the stuff that I'm supposed to be doing. They do all the legalities behind the scenes. So your brokerage would be your big companies like your Keller Williams and your Century 21s and insert name a big real estate firm that you've heard of. The brokerage that I would say I work for because um, I'm not employed by them, but the, the brokerage that oversees me is called Realty Path, which is a statewide, not a nationwide um, brokerage. And so an agency disclosure agreement or a buyer broker agreement, really just different verbiage for the same thing. It is the document that you as a buyer are going to need to sign at some point that says, hey, Jake and Realty Path are representing you in your real estate transaction. Okay, or whoever, you know, insert your agent brokerage name. So here's kind of how this works. I'm gonna make this as simple as you can because this is a little bit of a nuanced point, okay? And one of the things I'm gonna try to do on side of this channel is to bring you stuff that's kind of like industry insider stuff, but stuff that I think that you as the consumer should actually know because when you buy a house, there winds up being a lot of different paperwork involved. And chances are everything's cool. Everything's cool, right? You can relax, no one's trying to get you, but there are things that you should be aware of because I do think that they're important and if you're not savvy on it, it could come back to bite you a little bit, right? And I'll give you a couple kind of real life examples of this. So let's start with the, you know, the, the, the buyer broker agreement, agency documents, whatever it is. It's a document that just says, hey, this person or th this company, this agent, they are representing you. This is something that you are, chances are, in every state, I live in Utah, right? We have to sign these. This is not an optional thing. You don't get to choose like, oh, do I want to sign it? It's like, no, 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 you have to disclose inside of a real estate transaction who is representing who, aka what agent and brokerage is representing the seller, what agent and brokerage is representing the buyer. So you do have to sign these. The, there's two bits of sort of cautionary advice that I want to give. One is when should you sign these? And two, what are the terms that you should be agreeing to on these? So let's go first things first. When should you sign these? I believe that you should sign these not prematurely, which is what a lot of agents are going to want you to do, aka as soon as they meet you, as soon as you're essentially a lead for them, they're going to want you to sign these things as fast as possible because now they have locked you into a contract, call it what it is, they have locked you into a contract that says you, Joe, the buyer, has to use you fucking Mike as the agent, right? Well, you need to know that Mike is good at his job before you sign these. That's my opinion, but I feel very comfortable giving you that opinion. There are plenty of people inside of this industry that they are either not good at their job or they're incredibly lazy. And I mean, guys, I, I deal with people in this industry every day. A lot of great human beings in the real estate industry and a lot of people that just suck at their jobs and you, you call it what it is, right? I know I will get plenty of criticism on this channel and real estate agents could be like, oh, you know, you shouldn't say that about real estate. And yo, you telling me? You telling me that shit ain't true? You know it is there, Joe, right? So you need to vet the agent before you start signing, saying, yes, I'm gonna use you for this transaction, right? Specifically, here's the things to look out for. As soon as they're like, hey, look, we're gonna get you in touch with a lender, 
right? We're gonna start making sure you can get a loan and we're gonna go ahead and send you over this document saying we're your agent. No reason you should be signing that document yet. Or if they're like, hey, before we go and we start looking at houses, you need to sign this buyer broker agreement saying that we're your agent. Not the time to do it in my opinion. Cause it's like, dude, I have not seen that you have any hustle or any follow through for me to trust that you're good at your job yet, right? Now, what we should have with each other is a handshake deal, which is a, hey, look, I as the buyer, right? I'm gonna take this process seriously. And you as the agent, I need to know that you're good at your job. As long as you're good at your job, I'm gonna use you for this deal, right? So it's like, no one's out to screw anyone here. But if it turns out that you suck at your job, I don't wanna be attached to you, right? So that's how I work this with all my clients. It's like, look, I don't even bring up this document until I need to per compliance sake, right? There's a point when you gotta sign it. Until then, it's like, look, dude, I'm gonna place trust in you. We're gonna have just kind of an open, honest, not an open relationship that would be a little dicey, but you know, we're going to have a, uh, a trusting relationship that look, I'm going to represent you well, and you're not going to go out and find a second agent behind my back. Like, let's just be cool, right? That's kind of how we work. Let's just be cool with each other, right? Man to man, man to woman, whatever it is, let's have a handshake deal. We're going to represent you. And then eventually we're going to have to sign this document. So that's how I think you should treat it. Make, make sure someone is legit before you go signing these documents. Second thing is pay attention to the terms of the document. What I mean by that is well, I would look at two things. Primarily, I would look at the length, the, the duration of the agreement, and then the location of the agreement. Here's what I mean by that. The document that we sign in Utah, it says, hey, this document is between us and these buyers for this location. And oftentimes, if we have like a good thing going with each other and we're totally cool, I'll just put any right? Like, like any property in Utah, because I could put a specific property address when we're making an offer for it. The problem is if we don't get that, and statistically right now, we probably will not because it's so competitive, we have to redo this damn document every time we submit a new offer. And it's just kind of a pain, right? And if we're cool with each other, we know that every, everyone's cool. Like you, you guys know that we're hustling for you. And I know you guys are serious then there shouldn't be an issue signing this to just say, hey, look, anywhere in Utah, we're just gonna represent you. The, now, here's a, here's a caveat to that. Here's a time when I didn't do that very recently. This was last week where we had some buyer clients who they, um, we were putting in an offer on a new construction, uh, like, a, like a custom home build. And the lead time on, on this particular uh, address was going to be about nine months. Now, I didn't want to write the buyer broker agreement to say, hey, for nine months, any property you look at in Utah, you got to use us as your agent. So I actually wrote that document specific to that address, right? And I wrote it for the duration of a year because I'm like, well, if the buyer says it's going to, or the, the, the builder says it's going to take nine months, like let's build in an extra three months for like shit happens. It was hard to get lumber or cabinets or whatever it is, right? So, hey, for the next year, yes, we're representing you on this particular address. But if you, for something went wrong on that address and you had to go get a different place, hey, technically you could use someone else or if everything's been cool with us, you could use us for that as well, right? So pay attention to two things, the duration and the the, the terms in terms of the location of it. Is, it. is it anywhere or is it tied to a specific address? If you trust your agent, don't have an issue with them signing that document for any address, right? As long as you know that they're cool and they're doing a good job. Length of time, I would be minus something like a new construction thing, like that nuanced one that, that I just told you about. I would sign these for probably more like a three month duration. I would not be signing them for a year because there's, there's just no need. Like, why are we signing this for a year? Like, this should take us you know, a, a couple of months maybe to get this whole thing done. So be a little leery of signing them for too long. Um, there's not much else, you know, they're relatively straightforward. And I will be the first to tell you, um, we, we, I've had scenarios where people came to me and they said, hey, look, our, our agent's not doing a good job and we're gonna fire them and we'd like to hire you. And I've said, hey, look, first things first, I'm not in the business of taking other people's clients. So I need you to like, you sell me on why this agent's not doing a good job because I don't want that karma if it turns out that they were a good agent, but you just wanted to jump ship, right? But it's like, hey, 
one thing I, I'm going to need to know if we're going to go down this path, if like your agent really sucks and you're firing them regardless, is have you signed this document? Some agents are going to be cool. Like if you actually needed to get out of the document, some of them are going to say, hey, look, no problem. If you don't like me, you know, it, it is what it is. I'm not going to make you do something that you don't want to do. And then some agents might actually try to get you to stick in these. So just pay attention to what you're signing. No, you will likely have to sign these documents. Just pay attention. Okay. No one's necessarily trying to screw you on these, but just you need to be a little bit savvy when you're looking at that document. So again, it could be called a buyer broker agreement. It could be uh, some sort of agency disclosure, something to that effect. Just pay attention. All right, guys, I know that one was a little bit in the weeds, so apologies if that went over anyone's head. I feel like there's plenty of agents that over time will see this video and very much hate everything that I just said in it, but that's okay because most of you actually know that I'm right, even though you hate the message of it. So if there's topics that you would like to see on this channel, feel free to chime in in the comments. We do look at comments and we'll get back to you. And if you have good ideas for videos or things that you think would be helpful for um, first time buyers or sellers or whatever it might be, Feel free to chime in. We'll do our best to make those videos that you, America, would like to see. Subscribe to the channel while you're here. And um, if you need real estate help, you can go to 1911syndicate.com. That's my, my baby. That's my company. And uh, we, we operate in a lot of different places across the U.S., largely uh, military, law enforcement, you know, broad umbrella, but that type of clientele. But we'll, uh, we'll help out pretty much anyone. So, well, not pretty much. We'll help out anyone as long as you seem like you're a decent human being. So, all right, everyone, have a good rest of your week. Hope you're doing well. See ya.